Hello students, now we come to uh, your book Compendium of Selected Essays and Nature and Travel. I am going to tell you something about the essay A House Full of Sparrows. This is an essay written by uh, a nature lover Ranjit Lal and he tells that how these birds they have adopted themselves to be living in a metropolitan city. He talks about the birds and how they live in congested places because uh, you know there are no more trees and they have nowhere else to make their nests. So they have you know started making nests at some very very difficult situations at very precarious uh, you know situations. And he starts his essay um, in that in Bombay a few birds have made a nest on the blade of the fan and he feels worried that how these birds conduct themselves when they make their nest on the blades of the fan. I mean he says that uh, I don't know how, how will, I mean, how, what kind of uh, parents would they be if they make their nests on the blades of a fan because they have to go out again and again to bring food for their children, for their offsprings or as they are called for their fridge, for their fledglings. I mean how will they collect their meal and how will they reach their meal uh, on the blades? I mean their life is very very difficult and you know the reason for this difficulty is that that in a metropolitan city like Bombay there is no place for them to make nests. I mean trees are vanishing, the houses, new houses, modern houses are made in such a way that there are no ventilators, I mean there are glass all around. I mean the space for their nests have become to a zero, literal zero. So they do not know where to place. So this, these are the precarious uh, you know, locations that they are making their nests on. And he says that this is the toughest thing that this is happening and sparrows are such a wonderful um, you know, uh, component in the environment. If they vanish, if they disappear, I mean there will be an environmental degradation. And and when the first question I am coming to on page number 65 that what was the reaction of the author when he saw the nest of sparrows on the top of the ceiling fan. So he felt really amazed. He wondered that what kind of parents they would be if they are going to make their nest on the blades of the fan and what if the chicks, the fledglings drop on the ground. I mean they will be killed and they will have to move out and move in so many times in a day when they have to bring their food. You know I mean they will be in dangerous situation and even they will put their children into dangerous position. So he feels that this is a tough situation for the birds as they have nowhere to make their nests on. The second question, why did the two sparrow families fight? So as you will read the essay, you will come to know that there were two sparrows families, sparrow families living and the he sparrow was very handsome and the she sparrow in the next nest fell in love with that handsome male sparrow. But when the wife of the handsome male sparrow came to know that someone is having an eye on my husband, she felt very bad. So how the two ladies, the lady sparrows, how they fought with each other to grab the attention of the handsome male fellow adds wit to the essay. This is all the imagination of the essayist Ranjit Lal who feels that the two ladies are fighting over who likes, I mean who is liked by the handsome uh, male sparrow more. The next question, what did the author do when he saw a fledgling sparrow in his room? So when the author spotted a fledgling sparrow in his room, he felt bad for it because it had fallen from its nest and it did not know how to fly. If it was not given care, it would die. So he put it up 
nursed it, gave water to it and kept it in his shoe box, in an empty shoe box. You know, and that is how. And the parents, uh, they came and they took over. They fed the fledgling. But in a few days, that bird died because it had fallen from a height. But the author empathized with it, nursed it. But then it died after a few days because, because it could not tolerate the fall from a height. Fourth question. Why according to the author did the sparrow build their home in a terrifying place in Mumbai? Now we all know that Mumbai is a metropolitan city. You know, the houses are so close to each other that there is not even a space for a human being to stand properly to watch the sun, to watch nature. And these poor birds have nowhere, no place, no space to build their uh, nests in. So they, they make their nests wherever they can, wherever they find some solitude. So sometimes they make their nests on the blades of a fan. But when these fans will start working, it will be very, very difficult for them to again relocate, to again make a nest for themselves. Then is discuss the different reasons for the alarming decline in the number of sparrows all over the world. So students when you will read the essay you will find that there is an alarming decline in the number of sparrows all over the world and this is a worrisome sign. This is not good if the birds are disappearing. So there can be a few reasons as they have been given in the essay. Number one, that due to the modern architecture of our houses, you know, there is glass all around. The sparrows do not find solitude over there. They do not like to make nests over there. And secondly, that um, uh, the exhaust from the motor vehicles kills off the caterpillars which are fed to the birds. So if the birds do not find cat caterpillars to feed their offsprings, how will they give life to them? Everyone has to eat something to stay alive and a diet of a bird is caterpillar. So there are no more caterpillars. There is no more soil around. There are lock-in tiles everywhere. You know we are spoiling the homes of the caterpillars. So if there are no caterpillars, it means there are no birds since we have to feed caterpillars to sparrows. So then the long question is compare and contrast the characteristics of house sparrows and cinnamon sparrows. Now we, we know that house sparrows are very very chirpy. You know they talk a lot, they are cheeky and, and, and the cinnamon sparrows they are found in Himalayas. And they are quieter, they are gentler and their plumage is more caramel colored than chestnut. And they are very very simple and if they have to compete. I mean the house sparrows will find the cinnamon sparrows very very quiet, gentle and they will call them the simpleton, the simple birds. So I mean the theme of Ranjit Lal's uh, essay, A House Full of Sparrows is that, that the sparrows are losing their homes. Human beings have intruded everywhere. They have intruded their homes as well. That is why their, you know, home is shrinking. There are no more trees where they can make their nests and it has become very difficult for them to survive. That is why they are forced to make their nests on the blades of a fan. I mean, it is a very precarious situation. You know, any uh, switching on of a uh, switch, you know, will... Um, you know, you know, will uh, will move the fan and the nest will fall down and their eggs will break and who knows that there is a fledgling over there and you know this is what this is the future of the birds but they have accommodated very well uh, to the metropolitan city life of uh, Mumbai like all human beings have but the writer the essayist feels that it is very difficult you know uh, uh, condition for the birds to survive in and that is why there is an alarming decline in the number of birds.
experts. They all are dying, number one, because there are no more homes, there are no more trees and there are no more caterpillars. So this is, I mean, the message that we get from Ranjit Lal's essay is that, that we should develop, I mean, we should invest in development, but not at the cost of nature. Birds are very important. They eat caterpillars, they eat insects. If there are no birds, then, you know, there will be a difficult situation for all of us. And we can just imagine that it is going to harm us. It is going to put all of us in danger zone. The next chapter that I would be taking up today is uh, why we travel and that is on page 66. In this um, uh, essay, Piku Ayer, a South Indian writer, Indian writer says that we travel initially to lose ourselves but then to find ourselves. He says that traveling is very important. You know, when it, it, it breaks the monotony when we travel but then we, first of all we want to lose ourselves aimlessly wandering here and there but eventually we learn so much from the travel. And this is what, this is the theme of his essay, Why We Travel. And he says that there are many benefits of traveling, you know. First of all, we break the monotony. We all want to have a break, you know, and that is a very welcome break. And then he says that when we travel, we have a different point of view. We see everything from a good point of view. We enjoy everything. And it is a good investment of time into good things, you know. And we, when we come back, we are all, uh, you know, um, uh, rejuvenated. We are all happy. We all have happy vibes and happy hormones. You know, then he says that... Uh, a culture exchange takes place. Suppose the writer goes somewhere where he has never been to. He enjoys their traditions, their language, their custom, their dressing sense and he gives his own things to them. So this is a good cultural exchange. He learns so much about them and they also, the other also learn so much about you. And he says that how can a person search his or herself while traveling? As he starts the essay by saying that traveling is like losing oneself and then finding oneself. And he says that while traveling, you find yourself. You get to know who you really are. Because sometimes we just forget who we really are. In the hurry and scurry of life, the troubles and tribulations of life, we forget to enjoy life. But this teaches us how to enjoy how to relax, how to have sometimes life on a, you know, a slow motion, you know, sometimes we just pass on things without appreciating and admiring the beauty of nature. But this is how we learn that this is more important. Some things can wait, but not admiring nature around you. And that has a very, very benefiting, you know, uh, uh, positive, positive impact on you. And then he says that what is the benefit of following a simple lifestyle while traveling? The writer, uh, I mean, suggests that you should have a very, very simple lifestyle. You should not carry a baggage, both symbolically and literally. Do not carry so much things, so many things with you. I mean, because those will be extra burden. I mean, travel as light as you can. I mean, both literally and symbolically, do not carry a reputation of a thing that you are going is too good or too bad. Just let yourself free and imbibe wherever you go of everything that it has to go. I mean, prior thinking should not be there. So just go there, enjoy whatever it has to offer. Everything, every step will count. Everything will give you a lesson that is well learned. How can a person experience ecstasy? I mean, you will be all ecstatic when you just step out of your comfort zone, when you have to wait for something to happen, when you have to get up early to enjoy the sunrise, and when you have to go back late to your hotel room because you have yet to enjoy a sunset. And that is all that you will learn uh, when you come back. And you will enjoy that I learned so much today. So we all should travel. And this is what the writer says. That we all should travel. And this travel is not just the traveling outside. This travel is also traveling inside. Sometimes just sit back, relax, close your eyes and imagine. 
that no one is there around you. You are alone on this planet. Just close your eyes and look within. There is a demand coming from there, from within you. Listen to that voice. Listen to what is the requirement of your body, of your soul, of your mind. And give it the thing that it wants. It will thank you. Your body, your mind, your soul will thank you for this. So traveling is not just visiting, you know, places. It is also visiting yourself. It should not only be a travel outside, but also a journey within. So thank you so much. These are the two essays. Please read, keep reading your essays in detail. The vocabulary is there. And when you read the essays, the short questions, the long questions will not be difficult for you to answer. Keep a journal. Please keep writing. See you soon. Thank you so much.